Queen Elizabeth I, William Shakespeare, Oliver Cromwell, Isaac Newton, Charles Darwin, Charles Dickens, Winston Churchill, Princess Diana. These Great Britons have one thing in common. Their images hang on the walls of the prestigious National Portrait Gallery in London. Here you can meet the men and women that have made and are making British history. Their faces preserved in paint, their legacy preserved forever. Now, for the first time, the British people have chosen who they want to be painted as an icon of our times. Hello and welcome to your Friday One Show with Chris Evans. In September 2013, viewers of the BBC's One Show voted from a list of 12 candidates, including some of Britain's best loved and most respected people. 12 inspirational Brits on a very special shortlist I'm not some cuddly little old lady. The nation's choice was Simon Weston. Congratulations, Simon Weston. During the Falklands War of 1982, Simon was on board the Sir Galahad when it was bombed by Argentine planes. He suffered horrific burns and the nation followed his fight for survival. His battle to overcome his injuries, make a success of his life, and help others has inspired many. If people just look at the scars, they see sadness. Ultimately, my life is, is a very happy life, <laughs> and I'm a very happy person. Thank you very much. Now I'll follow Simon over three months, as his portrait is painted, so he can take his place on the wall among our greatest Britons. <laughs> Um, I really don't want this to be a negative picture. It's got to be all about, let's, let's look forward, look what life can be, because it was a battle and it's been won, really. I joined Simon on the way to the National Portrait Gallery for his first meeting with the artist who'll paint him. I was just privileged to be involved in the vote, really. Um, but other than that, I didn't expect to win at all. I mean, I probably would have voted for Michael Palin. And why do you think people did vote for you? I have no idea. Um, Perhaps half my family had me on speed dial or something, I don't know. <laughs> half the population of Wales. <laughs> One might think that you might be a little bit trepidatious about having your portrait painted. No, not really. I mean, people stare anyway, you know, so... Do they still? Yeah, gosh, yeah. I mean, it is what it is, you know. I go on holiday, people stare. I've had people say and do some very irreverent things about the way I look, you know. The Sun, of, Sun Newspaper of Canada um, I had an article saying I was the ugliest person in the world, so uh, I suppose anything from there is an improvement. That must have hurt. Um, not really. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not nice and you don't enjoy it, but um, hurt, I wouldn't let them hurt me. Do you have a view how you want this portrait to be painted? You know, what you'd like to be wearing, what you'd like in the background? Is it just your face? Is it all of you? I suppose the Mankini or budgie it. smugglers are out of the question. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> the gallery is one of my favourite places because it tells the story of Britain not through dry historical fact, but through the faces and characters of those that shaped it. So have you been to the National Portrait Gallery before? Once. Because you'll be in... Illustrious company here. Yeah. I mean, we have our kings and queens here, Henry VIII, Elizabeth I. Yeah, I know. I'm me. I'm a little lonely from the valley. <laughs>
The artist chosen to paint Simon is Nikki Phillips, one of Britain's leading portraitists. She was classically trained in Italy and is a firm favorite of the royal family. She's painted the queen and her acclaimed portrait of the two princes, William and Harry, hangs in the National Portrait Gallery. I knew what I wanted to do with Harry. I very much wanted to do his profile. Um, he's got a fantastic nose. And, um, and actually, William was leaning against the pillar in my studio, waiting for me to tell him what to do. And I just turned around, and there was the picture. It was, you know, I was blown away by having them in there anyway. And it was such a privilege to, to see this little scene going on. And I thought, well, I'll share that with everyone. I just love the way the hand's on the sword and just so relaxed. <laughs> I think he felt like using it on me at the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day. I think you're being too harsh. <laughs> it's really good fun painting uniform. All those lovely highlights on the medals and things. Makes me wonder what the heck I'm going to wear now, because I am got a uniform. <laughs> I think what you're wearing today is rather nice. I think you might have conquered that one already. Having your portrait painted for the gallery is a serious business. I don't know if Simon's been warned about this, but it might take a bit of time. Um, it all starts with a formal meeting in the boardroom. Um, cut off. There is a, a deadline for this portrait, which is the February trustees meeting, and that's where our portraits are approved for the collection. It so has a chance it could not be approved. There then, is the, the possibility that it might be rejected. No pressure, then, <laughs> <laughs> Nikki's shuddering. <laughs> I've got something to look forward to then. Nikki, when looking at a portrait, it tells you about the character of the sitter. And so much of one's character comes through one's face. And of course, your face is not the face that you were born with. Yours is the mm -hmm. face as a result of, of what happened to you. So how is that going to affect how you go about it? I suppose it's not the first time he's put his image in the hands of somebody else. But I mean, you know, there's a lot in those eyes. And, you know, there's still plenty of expression in his face, despite the fact it not being not necessarily being born with that. And I think the best I'll be able to do is glean what comes from it. The Simon Weston of today. What are your feelings about that, Simon? Are there any things that you you don't particularly like that you, you no, wouldn't want emphasised or No. Uh, this is a this is a collage, you know, it's been put together from different parts of my body and and I'm missing bits of it. My mother said, I mean, how on earth are you going to paint me without any ears? And how do you keep me from being lopsided? And then she said to me about, you know, have you got that many shades of pink? Um, so, you know, <laughs> I can't be vain. Um, but no, I've got no ego on it. You know, when you look at that painting that was done of the two princes, you know, that looks exactly like them to me. It's so... <laughs> can't ask for any more than a true interpretation of the person that's there, really. Can I, can I ask, Simon, I've noticed in the little time I've spent with you that you, do, you gesticulate quite a lot. Mm. And your hands, which were, were, were badly burnt as well, are very much part of your story. What do you think, Nicky, about them as part of the portrait? I think they should be part of it. I really do. You know, it is not just his face that was affected, and um, it's part of the story, quite an important part. Because that was you trying to rescue a colleague, wasn't it, on the Sir mm. Galahad? I tried to pull him out, but he sadly died in my hands, yeah. That's war. Simon's harrowing experience was captured in a documentary called Simon's War. It's incredible seeing these injuries and imagining somebody coming back from them. All right, we'd like to try moving those fingers again. You know, a lot of people tend to think that I'm going to be quite sort of sad or doer because of what's happened. I'm, I'm far from that. My life is, is a very happy life, oh, and, and I'm a very happy person. And you said that what happened to you, being caught in that inferno, was the best thing that could have happened to you. Look, I didn't want to be injured, and I wished I'd never been injured. But there are 48 men on board the ship that would love to be in my position right now. And I'm sure their families would think the same thing. Let's do that, hang on, watch. Yeah. It built me up to be who I am. 
and it built me up then to give me the opportunities. I don't know what my life would have been had I not been injured, but as I did get injured in the way that I did and the worst to come back alive, um, then I have to accept that it's the best thing that happened to me because it could have easily been 49 people. Let me just see if that's ready to move. Is that no. so on? I don't think I can watch it. There's still some areas, I think, that might need some new skin put on. As long as you can sort my eyes and my hands out, I don't care what you do. Those are first on the list. His face is everything and his hands. You know, he says here he wants his eyes... Oh, my God. Um, he wants his eyes and his... <laughs> and his hands to be OK. That's right. You've got your priorities right. I need to capture what's what's in the, in the eyes, really. If people just look at the scars, they see sadness and they see 85 plus operations between five and 700 units of blood and blood products being given to me. Um, the fact that uh, my heart stopped twice and things. Ultimately, you know, whatever happened has happened, but you know, those are just things. Um, They're quite big things. They are big things, but big things happen to lots of people and yet they survive, but they've never had the enjoyment of life that I've had. So, you know, I have to accept that, you know, I've been I've been damned lucky, and, and I really do feel that. I'm the luckiest guy I know. He's spent the best part of 30 years being positive about his life. I want to concentrate on that. <laughs> if you've got to take something out of tragedy, take the positives, take the humanity. <laughs> take the laughter, take every other bit of goodness and kindness that existed at that point in time. If we can encompass just a little bit of that in the portrait, then, you know, that, that would be, make me very happy because it would show the real me. It's the day of the first sitting, and Simon is in West London on his way to Nikki's studio. Right, can I just try this? OK, I'm going back where you are. Right, sorry. Nikki's first job is to work out how Simon will pose for his historic picture. I wonder if it might... Just try it and see. Mm -hmm. We might go back. <laughs> lean forward. I like the leaning forward. That's too low. Up, up off the... It's no, none of that. I know, it's a nice chair, that one. <laughs> yeah. oh, this is very boring. Think of what you're going to do tomorrow, because I need to do some thinking. <laughs> no, 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 none of that. Sit forward. I'm oh, sorry, was, I thought I was supposed to do some thinking while you were doing something. <laughs> well, yes, but you can think and pose at the same time with any luck. OK. <laughs> I think you need to be standing, actually. Come round this way. And uh, look back towards it. Right. My mother's never going to forgive me for not having a tie. And actually, come forward a little. God, it's a complex business, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You've got to be really patient. You've got to be good. Otherwise, I'll go berserk and produce something hideous. That'd be scary. Just stand. I, I want your weight quite far forward on the chair, if you could. Okay. Believe it or not, when I was injured and on board the ship, a shadow appeared at the end of my bed. Mm -hmm. Put his hands at the end of my bed and just cocked one leg in front of the other, leaning like that. And when I explained the day that it had happened, my grandmother said, look, my mother's real father, she had prayed to him all day. And whether it, I, I don't know whether I believe it, whether I was hallucinating or whatever, but I can remember it as clear as a bell ringing in my ears. Do what you said that person did at the end right. of the bed. Oh, yeah, it is a...